I am Jason M and I read comics. That's why in the week of February 19th, I decided to read all the DC New 52 comics that were published in the world. I'm going to give each of these a buy it, borrow it from a friend, or a skip it rating. But before I get to that, don't forget to go to Majorspoilers.com, the comic book website where they know that you love comic books, and we do too. Now enough of this jibba jabba, let's get on to some reviews. Animal Man number 28, an almost great conclusion to the Animal Man saga, even though Animal Man has one more issue left that will be personally drawn by Jeff Lemire. The big battle brouhaha between his daughter and brother Blood happens, takes place, takes place all in the red, but I will say this, this was one of the New 52's great series, and I almost don't know where he, they're going to take the character after this, because it kind of seems like that Buddy Baker is going to give up being Animal Man after this issue, but we know that he's in Just League United. Either way, this is a great collection. If you've not read this collection yet, I suggest you go buy all the trade paperbacks, buy all those, buy this issue, buy everything you can that has Animal Man and Jeff Lemire's name on it. Read, buy, and double buy this book. Batman and Two-Face number 28, a great end to an otherwise uneven retelling of Two-Face's origin in the New 52. There are two elements that I really want to discuss from that came from this issue by Peter J. Tomasi. One, how the hell does Two-Face know Batman's secret identity? I guess that's the new thing in the New 52. It makes sense. It actually makes sense for me. I always thought in the Dark Knight, the movie, it was really weird that Harvey couldn't figure it out. It seemed a little strange. So I'm okay with the addition. It just comes out of nowhere in the middle of a fight scene where Two-Face just yells it at him. He's like, Bruce! Batman's like, Bruh? but anyways, and then also the other element of this issue is that it gives the suggestion that Two-Face commits suicide at the end of this issue. So if he commits suicide, is he gone? No, he's not, because you're reading a comic book and it's got DC Comics' name on it, and no DC Comics person ever kills any villain that they can't. <gasps> because they want to always put him in movies and more movies and more books and more things and more things, and Two-Face is not dead, he'll be back in two months. An interesting scene that could have had a really big emotional wallop if they hadn't done the whole Two-Face kill out, kill out, fake out, suicide thing. Anyways, I'm not making light of suicide at all. I, res uh, you know, it's a, you know that situation. But anyways, this is a fictional character. Does Two-Face commit suicide? We don't know. We'll find out later. Uh, you know, this is by it. Batwoman number 28. If you don't know from last issue, Batwoman basically revealed her secret identity accidentally to her uh, lover slash fiance Maggie Sawyer who is you know working for Gotham PD and there is a very interesting take on this they could have been the whole like get out of my house I don't like that you're Batwoman get out of here but instead they did uh, a scene with Maggie Sawyer and Kate and Maggie Sawyer basically being like look Kate I'm okay with this you know you like to put on skin tight leather and a red cape I don't agree with that fashion choice I don't know if red goes with black you know, it's 2014, let's try to mix out and match the colors a little bit, but you know what, you need psychiatric help, come talk to me when you get it, and just lets her go, and it's just a very interesting, it's a very grown-up take, which I'm very surprised to see in a comic book, actually, you know, and a funny book, but um, I'm interested by this, and I'm interested to see where it's going, Be kudos to the writer, well done, this is a borrowed from a friend, there's not much to this issue besides that one scene, but still, read it for that scene, borrow from a friend. Birds of Prey number 28. All of Gothtopia is a skip it. Unless you like seeing Batman. Basically, if you like seeing Batman. But otherwise, skip it. Green Lantern New Guardians number 28. Kyle and Carol and the new guardians of the little, little blue guys are star trekking around the universe. See what I did there? And they go to a new planet and they meet new aliens and they learn about a new situation of conflict where the aliens are being oppressed. Oh, we don't understand all these alien ways. Oh! And then some weird guy called the God Killer, or there seems to be like more than one of them, comes out of nowhere and shows up. And I read this issue and I was like, this seems very familiar. Wait a minute, Marvel Now's first storyline was called Thor the God Killer. What the, what the, what the, what the, what the, what the, what the? Yeah, that's what my reaction is when I read a Marvel Now comic book inside of a DC package, you know? It's like it's like opening up your Christmas present and you're knowing that you're going to get a puppy and when you open it up, out comes a giraffe. Now, I think that's a positive, but for some people, that's a negative. So because of that, and because it's kind of almost basically ripping out a storyline of another Marvel comic book, I wish they would give more purpose to Kyle, but it's because of this, it's a skip it. Harley Quinn number three. So Harley goes out on the town and she wears a dress that looks way better than her new biker costume that the New 52 gave her. It looks awesome, it looks sexy, it looks sleek. They should just have her wear this all the time. 
And she walks around the town and meets some prisoners that get mojoed by her and they, they start falling in love with her. And so she has a big fight with a, with a chainsaw and a weed whacker. And basically two questions come to my mind. Because this dress is very revealing, it reveals that all of Harley's skin is pure white like the Joker's. Uh, how did that happen? Because in the old 52, it was just, she just painted her face. So has anybody explained that? Explain me downstairs if that's so. And the other thing is, she's walking around the street, she's Harley Quinn, and no one bats an eye. Everyone's like, hey, this is normal. Whatever, man. You know, cool. Clown chick going to the casino. I dig that. Put it all red. Or black. Or white. They don't have a white, baby. Put it all on white, black. I don't even know what that means. And because of that, skip it. Justice League number 28. Congrats, Jeff Johns. Congrats on making the Metal Men awesome. Metal Men were characters that I never cared about, but you know what? They gave them a new origin. They gave them personalities and characters. Well, they had personality and characters before, but now they just are really emphasizing. I love the new redesign. And then Chemo is one of the Metal Men. Like, Chemo is the Metal Man where they put the, uh, the reactive metal thing that makes the Metal Men into radioactive material, and he becomes Chemo. And it ingrains them as part of their origin. A fantastic issue and a really great use of showing what the new 52 could be by using new characters and new things. Buy this book. Red Hood and the Outlaws number 28. The closest issue to the original thrust of this series is by Scott Lobdell, where it was just three friends or three outlaws having three adventures and they weren't very good, but you know what? They were out for each other and they were looking at each other's back. This issue was nothing but fluff, but because it was so close, finally, by James Tinian to the original Red Hood look, I say this is a buy it. Supergirl number 28. Not only does this have sexy, weird, new 52, third version around Lobo, but it also has Kara getting her ring for the first time and putting on the most horrible Red Lantern costume you've ever seen. So I hope this storyline only lasts four issues and this just goes to prove that I think they have no idea what to do with Supergirl's character. That, I mean, that seems to happen a lot, but like it's happened again? Come on, DC, come on, uh-huh. I mean, if you like Red Lanterns, you're gonna love this issue, but I think if you like Supergirl, you're going to hate this issue, so it's a skip it. Trinity of Sin, Pandora number eight. Necro turns Pandora into a weird, goldy-looking Hawkman-like thing. Yep, it's as dumb as it sounds. Skip it. Wonder Woman number 28, a great book with great characterization and great art. And plus, I'm a sucker for anything Greek mythology. So that is a buy, a buy, and a buy. Wonder Woman still one of the strongest New 52 books. Although it's 28 issues in, it might be a little hard to understand. You, you might as well just go back and start with issue one, but buy issue number 28, because you know, you're eventually gonna get up the stairs to it. Up the Greek pantheon, if they say, huh? Definite buy it. And now it's time for my pick of the week. My pick where I, you only have the money to buy one comic book and all the comic books of all the comic books of all the comic book shops of the comic book shops of the world. This is the one you spend your money on. And that is Wonder Woman number 28. Simply put, one of the strongest DC titles out there. As I said, you might need to go back to the original traits, but you know what? Once you buy this issue and you catch up, you're gonna love it. Now, I have been reading lately that some of the sales on Wonder Woman are a little low. So we need to get out there, friends, and we need to support this book because this book by Brian Azzarello is amazing. Amazing. Bye, bye, bye. And that's all the DC New 52 comic books for February 19th. As always, go to Majorspoilers.com, the comic book website, where they know that you love comic books, and we do too. They have podcasts, they have amazing comic book reviews, uh, they have articles and comic book reviews, and sometimes I write some stuff on that site. It's a great site. Go check it out. Clickety, clickety, clickety on all the ads. And if you don't know, I have a new podcast called Geek History Lesson. It's on iTunes. It's on Stitcher. You can find it over on the Libsyn. It's everywhere you want it to be. Go uh, go subscribe, go download it, go listen. This week was Miss Marvel. Next week, I'm gonna let you in on a little secret, friends, is Deathstroke. Next week is all about Deathstroke. This week, Miss Marvel, next week, Deathstroke. You know, if iTunes loved it so much to put it in its new and noteworthy section, then I think that you should put it in your new and noteworthy section as well. You know what I'm saying, friends? You like geek, you like me, you'll love that podcast. Thank you as always for watching these videos and sharing them with your friends. Comment down below, let me know what you're reading, what you like this week, whether you thought I stumbled around on my words too much. I need to know, I internet love you. I'm Jason Inman, be seeing you. To the west is a dream unbounding. All the dwarves will eat of the beast and eat of the meat, and we will go underground. So it's our after the credit times, friends. After the credits, let's talk real quick. Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy trailer. Hmm, what'd you think? You know, um, 
I thought it had some really cool shots in it, but I'm not a big Guardians of the Galaxy fan, so I'm still in the negative side of it. Now, I'm totally willing to be proved wrong by this movie, and I hope this movie totally proves me wrong. But from what I'm seeing, I'm just not mm, I'm just not that jazzed about it. I'm not I'm not as jazzed about it as I am the Winter Soldiers trailer, which is just totally hooked me. Guardians of the Galaxy, I'm just kinda like, mmm, I hope that's good. Mmm. Uh, uh, I also saw the new RoboCop, and I gotta tell you what, guys, I liked it. I mean, it's a C+. It's not as good as the original, but you know what? It didn't suck. It didn't completely suck at all. It had some great emotional moments, especially by letting Alex Murphy stay more human most of the movie. Uh, but I, I swear that the best moment of the entire movie was they, they opened with this Samuel Jackson doing the TV. He's a short course of TV host like that. And it fades to black and then it fades in the title of RoboCop. And then you hear the classic RoboCop theme of ba 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 And I was like, oh Lord, the music. But that's the only time they Played it. They played it there, and then like once in the end credits, and it's my favorite, one of my favorite movie themes of all time by Basil Bordera. So I loved it, loved it, loved it. Uh, but the rest of the movie, uh, it's okay. You know, it's one of those movies that if it comes on Netflix or it comes on cable TV, give it a watch. Don't stay away from it. No, just give it a watch, and you'll be pleasantly enjoyed. But I don't know if it's an own it. You know what I'm saying? If you're a big RoboCop fan, I'd say go see it. Uh, if you've been one of the haters, you know, go see it. Give you like RoboCop, you're gonna like it's 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 RoboCop. It's good. Batman's in the movie, and so is Commissioner Gordon. So it's cool. Just go, and so is uh, Rorschach. So go see the movie. You know what I'm saying? All right, that's all it is. That's all. That's all there is for this after the credits time, friends. Ha hashtag hostess downstairs. Confuse the crap out of people in the comments. Hashtag hostess. Deuces.